Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about Florida bass fishing. We're going to talk about everything you need to know from bait selection, how to fish in Florida, where to fish in Florida, what you need to know about catching fish in Florida, pretty much everything that you can ask about Florida bass fishing. I've fished everything from Alabama up to New York and all the way to the Mississippi River and there is nothing like Florida bass fishing. It was very confusing when I came here the first time and it took me two or three trips down here to even have success and catch some big bass. But I will break down everything you need to know about Florida bass fishing so whether you're coming here for the first time and have never fished in Florida before or have been fishing in Florida for years, hopefully you can take something away from today's video and catch more fish while you're down here in Florida because there's little tricks you can do to make sure that you catch fish and have success. So stay tuned to the end of today's video. We're gonna go through all of it. And if there's anything I miss, leave it in the comments down below and I can answer your question as well. So let's get into it. So the first thing we have to touch on is bait selection when you're in Florida. There's a million different baits that work down here, just like anywhere else in the country. Pretty much anything you can find in a Bass Pro Shops will probably catch a fish down here, but I wanna shortcut your fishing down here. There is going to be a few select baits that you need. I'm gonna give you colors, sizes, everything, but basically there's two categories of baits. You have moving baits and you have bottom baits, as you do with anything else. But they're even simpler in Florida. So what I have here is a selection of about five different types of moving baits is what I like to throw in Florida. One only works certain times of the year. That is gonna be the top water. The top water selection for Florida is fairly simple. I throw two top waters, whether I'm looking for giant bass or spawning bass. If I'm looking for spawning bass, I'm gonna throw a prop bait. This is a Rapala x rap prop right there. All it is is just a bait with two propellers on it, one on the front, one on the back. You fish it like a popper, you throw it out there and just give it twitches, and it'll cause these propellers to do a spin every time you twitch it, and then it'll sit over top of a bed, and if, it, if you pop it over top of a bed and it sits there, a lot of times the bass will come up and get it. This also works well for fry garters. If I'm looking for giant bass, I'm gonna go to the Head and Super Spook, and I mean the big Super Spook. This is the biggest one they make, the thing is huge. It's like five inches long. It makes a lot of popping sound, a lot of noise, and it draws fish in from a long way. All I do with this is walk it very slowly. I will target cast it to certain areas and almost walk it in place where I think a big bass will live. It will drive them crazy and they will come up and destroy this thing. Besides top water, the only moving baits that I throw down here in Florida, a lipless crankbait, I'm either going to use white or gold or like a chrome. This is actually a combination of both. It's half gold, half chrome. The main thing to note about the bait selection on what I'm gonna pick here is that Florida fish feed on three things. Bluegills, golden shiners, and shad. Those are the main three forages. If your lake doesn't have shad, then they only feed on bluegills and golden shiners. So a lot of my baits are gonna have gold in them. It works really, really well in Florida. A lot of my baits are gonna be a watermelon red or a watermelon magic color, something like that. Red works really well down here in Florida. The bluegills actually have red tint to them. It's not something that I've ever seen before, but I've caught bluegills down here on purpose just to see what they look like, and they have red tint to them. So a red flake in your bait or anything red will help your bait a lot, or I'll use shad color colored baits. The other thing is when you're fishing like worms and stuff down here, you want very dark colored baits because the water is like a tannic tea color. So I will use a lipless crankbait that works exceptional in the submerged grass. There's tons of that in Florida. Another one that just works well up shallow or on submerged grass is the super fluke. I've caught a ton of bass in Florida on a zoom super fluke, just rig it weightless and twitch it around shallow cover. Two colors that I like the best, Golden Brim, I think it's called. This is from Zoom. It kind of has like a golden shiner appearance. The all time favorite down here. It can imitate golden shiners or bluegill is gonna be the Houdini Super Fluke. This thing imitates anything that the fish feed on down here perfectly. The only other color that I really like to throw down here is like I said, watermelon red. That's just a weightless Texas rig. That's what I fish those with. Next selection of bait down here is going to be when I'm really searching for fish, submerged grass or shallow cover is going to be the chatterbait. If your lake has shad, you can mix a white in, but for the most part, 
the two colors that I throw down here are black and blue, and this is Houdini, or Brett's Bluegill is another good one. Those colors are amazing. Dark colors imitate the forage really well. Keep it simple. If they're not eating these two colors, they're probably not gonna eat a chatterbait unless they're feeding on shad. So that's why I like to keep it simple in Florida. It's more about finding the fish rather than finding what bait they're gonna eat because they will eat pretty much anything if you can present it properly to them. The last selection for my baits is gonna be a swim jig. You have to have a swim jig if you come to Florida. This is one of the must have baits. You can fish it shallow, you can fish it over submerged grass, you can fish it pretty much anywhere, and it comes in a ton of different colors and can imitate anything these fish are gonna feed on. But again, black and blue and a bluegill color, or this one's kind of like a yellowy with a, a whitish bottom. If you put a Houdini or Copperfield, I think is the color, Kytec swim bait on the back of this, you can imitate bluegills and golden shiners in the same swim jig. So that is what I like to do with my bait selection on moving baits. When it comes to worm selection, I keep it really, really simple down here in Florida. I fish a trick worm. So I use the trick worm as like a scattered cover, light flipping type of bait. I pitch it to docks, scattered vegetation, anything like that. I'll flip a little bit heavier cover with a five inch Senko and I'll also fish this on a wacky rig. Another really good one is the Zoom Speed Worm. This is probably one of the best lures ever for Florida bass fishing because you can drag it on the bottom and fish it slowly, and you can also fish it as a swimming worm to cover water and it comes through vegetation amazing. This is just all on a light Texas rig with like a 3 16 ounce weight. That's all you need. And then some of my other bait selections, which I don't have out right now, is like a beaver bait, a rage bug, something like that where you're actually gonna flip heavy cover with it on a heavier weight, a one ounce weight, a two ounce weight. You need very heavy weights down here in Florida because the vegetation and places these fish will actually live can be so thick that you can't even get a two ounce weight through the cover sometimes. You have to throw it way up in the air and let it fall back down through. That is more of a cold front thing. When you get a cold front, these fish will slide up into the heavy cover, which we'll talk about when we talk about locations. And then again, like I said, dark colors. I fish black and blue and June bug or June bug red. That's about it. The only other color of speed worm that I like to throw is called sungill. It imitates golden shiners and bluegills really well. So that's one other color that I like to fish. Now, when it comes to when you wanna fish in Florida, typically if you're making a trip down here, you wanna fish end of December through about June. That's the prime time. May is probably cutting it close. Um, typically January, February, March, April, and May are the best months down here in Florida if you're looking for giant bass. If you just wanna catch fish, you can catch fish anytime, but if you come here in June, July, August, September, it's gonna be really hot and really tough fishing. October can get a little bit better sometimes, but it can still be tough. November can also be hit or miss. And then December, once you start getting into those fish starting to spawn, starting to do their thing and think about it, that's when the fishing is gonna get good and that's when you wanna come down here if you're trying to make a trip. If you are gonna come down here in December, January, February, those months of the year, you're gonna run into cold fronts in Florida. I'm sure you've probably heard about it if you looked up Florida bass fishing. Cold fronts all but kill the bite in Florida. These fish really shut down. It's not like a cold front up north where if you're fishing, cold front happens, just the bite's a little bit slower or you might have to adjust your bait presentation they almost literally shut down in Florida and you will catch nothing because the bite gets so tough on a cold front, especially depending on how severe it is. If you have a cold front come through sometimes in January and stuff like that, you could get a temperature drop in the water of five, 10 degrees if it's cold enough and that will kill the bite like that. Um, not saying you can't catch fish, it's just gonna be very, very tough to actually get a bite. What you want, if you're trying to come down here and catch a lot of fish and big ones, is a warming trend. When it's all steady weather and it's slowly getting warmer, there's not heavy wind, there's a lot of sun going on, doesn't matter the moon phase or anything like that. If you're down here between January and May and you have a warming trend, there will be big fish shallow everywhere thinking about spawning. That is when you're gonna catch your biggest fish on a warming trend down here in Florida. That's what you wanna look for. Then all you'll have to do is find the right cover and the right presentation for what those fish want in that piece of cover and you'll be able to catch some big fish. So let's talk about some cover that you wanna fish. So what type of cover do you wanna fish while you're down here in Florida? 
here's a couple secrets for what you're looking for, especially around grass. This is stuff that I learned after many, many tries down here. The number one thing is mixed vegetation. And what I mean by that is you will have multiple different types of cover in the same area, whether it's Kissimmee grass mixed with reeds, mixed with lily pads, or you have hydrilla and eelgrass mixed together under the water, or you have big pads, they're called spatter dock, that have the thick stems mixed in with some flat pads with the thinner stems. Anything like that where you have mixed vegetation, that is going to be a high percentage area in Florida. What that means is there is a bottom change of some sort, whether it's a depth because different vegetations grow in different depths, or it is a bottom hardness change because different vegetations grow in different bottom hardnesses. Um, those little tricks are what's gonna get you more bites. You wanna fish in high percentage areas. The biggest thing that I noticed when I came to Florida the first time is that everything looks the same. There's vegetation for miles, and it looks like you could get a bite anywhere. It all looks good. But you need to pay attention to certain areas, and fish will get on very specific things sometimes to the point where if you can pick out they're on the Kissimmee grass today, or they're on the spatter dock today, or they're in the reeds today, you can minimize the amount of cover that you have to fish because there'll only be so much of that in a body of water. The vegetation change is usually one of those high percentage areas that you can key. If I find eelgrass mixed with hydrilla, there's fish there. But if I just find hydrilla by itself, there's no fish there. So that kind of stuff can key you in on what these fish are doing and where to find them. The unfortunate part is that the only way to find fish in Florida is you just have to fish for them. There's no use of fish finders. You can't side scan these fish, nothing like that. You literally have to just go make a ton of casts until you figure out what they're doing. But that is why I tried to fish mixed cover. Another really good thing is to fish docks. If you have a lot of grass, the dock will create shade underneath and a hole in the grass. The fish will get loaded up underneath and wait to ambush prey that comes through that hole in the grass there. So docks can be really good this time of year too. Another great tip for fishing in Florida is you don't have to catch the biggest fish right away. And what I mean by that is if you're catching small fish, that doesn't mean you're in the wrong area. It actually means you're in the right area. You just have to keep fishing and getting a lot of bites to eventually luck into the big one. The big ones are smart, the little ones are not, but the little ones will give away where the big ones wanna live. If you're getting a lot of bites, you're gonna give yourself a chance to catch a big fish. If you're not getting a lot of bites, you're not gonna have as good of a chance because you're probably not in the right area. In Florida, these fish like to gang up a lot, especially if you're down here during the spawning months, they'll all wanna spawn in the same place. So when they get really loaded up in one place, so if you find a 100 yard stretch of grass and you catch three 12 inches out of it, you could come back in three days if it's on a warming trend and there will be a 30 pound bag on that same stretch of grass. The fish are coming there, it's just a matter of when they're gonna get there and being in the right place at the right time. And that leads me to my last tip of Florida bass fishing is to cover water until you find them and then fish really slowly in those areas. So the bigger fish I've found, I've caught more big fish on just a Senko or a trick worm or something very finessey, but a lot of the small ones will give themselves up on a rattle trap or something like that. So cover a bunch of water with those moving baits. Find those areas where you're catching a lot of fish on a moving bait, even if they're small. You may get a two pounder, a four pounder, a couple little ones. Mark those areas and then find an effective presentation that's a little bit slower and finesse and fish really, really slow down through those areas and focus on key areas and keep fishing them until you get that big bite. You need to be very thorough and eventually land in front of one and make one bite and then you'll be catching some big bass down here in Florida. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope it helped you learn a little bit about Florida bass fishing. Hopefully this is everything you need to know to get started down here and if I missed anything, like I said, leave it in the comments down below and I will either make another video on it at a later time or I will answer it right there in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Leave a like down below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up.